Hi, everybody. It is 12 o'clock, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for joining us today for um, the State of Ohio Real Estate Market webinar. We are super happy to see you here, and we hope you enjoy. Uh, my name is Madeline Smith. Uh, I work for Honduras College in Student Services, and I will be your moderator today. Um, we also have Adam Ashball. He's one of our instructors here at Hondros, as well as a Ohio broker, and he will be speaking with me today. On our agenda today, um, I'm going to do a quick introduction uh, over Hondros College. Uh, then we're going to dive into some questions with Adam, uh, get some insights on the Ohio State real, real estate market. Um, feel free to ask any questions in the chat while we're uh, going through these fact or fiction questions with Adam. Um, we will leave a little bit more time at the end for any additional questions. Um, and stay um, stay to, to the end because we do have some exclusive discounts uh, for our attendees to show our appreciation. Um, so over the last 50 years, Hondros has helped more than 1 million professionals, such as yourself, launch careers in real estate, mortgage, appraisal, insurance, and home inspection, whether it's pre-licensing, exam prep, or your continuing education courses, we have been there every step of the way. So what can Hondros do for you? Um, at Hondros, we offer flexible courses. Uh, you can complete them online, live stream, or in person at our, one of our campuses. Uh, we offer comprehensive education for our students to learn from experienced instruct instructors with real world knowledge. We have guidance with our 24 seven ask an instructor email and our one-on-one -on -one tutoring that is available. Additionally, we offer assurance to all of our students with industry-leading exam prep, CompuCram, and a pass-or-don't-pay guarantee. Um, if you do have any questions, um, please scan the um, any questions after the webinar. Um, please feel free to contact us by phone or email. Um, there's this QR code here that you can scan and it will also be at the um, available at the end of this webinar. All right, so I'm gonna let Adam introduce himself before we get started. All right, well, thanks, Maddie. Thanks, mm -hmm. Maddie. Before we get started, Hondros does a great job. I went to school at Hondros. I had my pre-licensing done as well as my broker. Um, that's before the internet was invented. I'm joking. Uh, but you can. There's a lot of great flexibility on classes, and uh, it, it's a great place. So, yeah, if you have any questions at the very end, scan that QR code. If you already have your license, you can do your post-licensing with us as well as um, your CE because that never ends. So, But my name, before we get started, my name is Adam Ashba. Uh, I am the president of Ashmont Realty in the state of Ohio. I also teach at Hondros. I also teach in the College of Business. So if you want to become a broker, I might teach those classes as well. And uh, today we're really going to dive into the, the state of Ohio and how the real estate market is uh, going, because this is important. So if you're an agent currently or you want to become one, it's so important that you know your numbers because you're going to have a lot of clients at social events, barbecues, your family or friends are going to ask you about things. And we really broke this down into a facts, fact or fiction. And we're going to come up, uh, we came up with a lot of frequently asked questions that I get personally. And I know you do it too at home, if you're a current agent, about what's going on in the state of Ohio. And it's really important that you know this. That way you can help your clients uh, with this information uh, as well. So, and we're going to have fun with this because I know numbers can get boring for real estate agents because we all, we all like to talk, right? But when we do the fact and fiction, I want you to participate at home. So when we say fact, I'm going to ask you if you think it's fact or fiction. If you think it's fact, I want you to go into the chat. So down below, there's a little chat button where you, you know, you say hello or ask questions, right? If it's fact, I want you to give me a thumbs up. So thumbs up if you think it's a fact. Now, if you think it's a fiction, 
or fake, right? Then uh, give me a thumbs down. And we'll do that for each one. I'm kind of interested to see everyone's feedback. And um, you will get a Zoom recording of this in your email if you can't stay for the whole thing. Should maybe take an hour, depending on how much questions you have. And uh, so give me a thumbs up if you think it's fact, thumbs down if it's fiction. And uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Awesome. Go Thanks. ahead, Maddie. What's the first question you have for me? Okay, Adam. So fact or fiction, Ohio yes. has some of the top real estate housing markets in the country. Mm, that's a good one. So what do you guys think at home? Thumbs up if you think that's true or fact or thumbs down if you think Ohio does not. Oh, we got some thumbs, a lot more thumbs up, it seems. Thumbs up. We had one thumbs down. Okay. A lot of thumbs up. So you're right. It's fact. It, it, it is fact. So good job, guys. So, yeah, we just had the 2024 National Association of Realtors uh, financial review. So it's kind of a... Uh, segueing into 2024 we recap what happened in 2023 and part of that um there was someone from realtor.com she actually she actually worked for the nar for a while and uh realtor.com actually had toledo ohio is one of the best top real estate markets for next year out of the entire country realtor.com i couldn't believe it the uh, third, the third top one, according to the National Association of Realtors, now that's separate, they're, they're two separate entities, was Dayton and Ketteringen. Uh, so T Toledo is anticipated to have over a 20% increase. You can see Dayton, Kettering is at 1.9. And actually, a lot of people think Columbus, Ohio is a hot market, which it is, but actually those areas outside of central Ohio are really growing. So if you are an investor, you have investors uh, that you might be working with, you wanna think about this and kind of pass that information on. So there's a lot of opportunity in some of these outlying uh, cities that we might not been exposed to previously. So that was a good question, Maddie. Get me warmed up on this cold <laughs> Monday morning. So, yeah, all right, what's the next one? Yeah, go ahead, give me another one, give me a harder one. Okay. Fact or fiction, Ohio median home sale prices are up compared to 2022. Oh, that's a good one. So everyone at home, give me a thumbs up if you think prices went up last year. Give me a thumbs down if you think home prices dropped in 2023. So we got a lot of thumbs up. No, no thumbs down yet. Are you cheating, Maddie? Are you looking at the chat? Are you Am I so cheating? Of, I look like you were trying to cheat. Uh, so <laughs> we got all thumbs ups, thumbs ups. Good job, guys. We got a lot of participants today. That's great. Um, thumbs ups. Thumb, let's see if it's winding now. All right, they're, they're sliding in. Where do you find the thumbs up and thumbs down? Fred, go to your chat. Go to the chat at the very bottom. It says chat on your toolbar. Click chat, and then you'll have like the emojis. You can, there's millions of emojis, but there's a thumbs up and thumbs down. Yep. I want to make sure everyone plays at home. So, okay. All right. Well, I think we're in. It's slowing down. So, it's, fact it's or fiction? Uh... What do we got? What do we got? Fact. It's fact, Maddie. It is. Um, actually, in the state of Ohio, we're up about 6.8% compared to last year. So a median sales price. Now, median, median is a little different than average. Median just means if you took every single house in the state of Ohio and you picked the one that was dead center, okay? Uh, so it, it would be $232,000. Um, so now the funny thing is, actually, there's a lot of other cities. You know, we always kind of focus on central Ohio for some reason, because I think it's been one of the better housing markets in the United States, but uh, there's a lot of other cities that had higher growth than Central Ohio did um, uh, last year. So, so what that means is this, guys, if you had a client that bought a condo for $100,000 last year, it 
on average would be worth like 106,000. So that's pretty good. Uh, rule of thumb for everybody is historically home prices increase about 3% a year. That's an average historically. Um, so we're really double that. So, you know, even though we've had some crazy things in the market and interest rates and things, we'll talk about that soon. Uh, home prices are still going up. It's still a really good time to invest in real estate. So, all right, that wasn't too bad. Go ahead, Maddie. What's the next one? Fact or fiction, Ohio is in a buyer's market. Oh, hmm. I haven't heard. <laughs> I haven't heard that term for a long time. So, all right, well, let's see. Everyone at home, if you think it's a buyer's market out there, we got a thumbs up. A lot oh, more thumbs down. This is the most thumbs downs we've had. So I'm I'm thinking this one might be fi fiction. I'm thinking. So let's see. Fiction, fiction, thumbs down, thumbs down. It looks like a slot machine in Vegas. It's like, do, 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 you know? So a yeah. lot of thumbs down. All right. I don't know. I think, I think everyone ho at home is pretty smart. So let's see the answer. Yeah, it's fiction. Um, we really haven't had a buyer's market. I don't know. I, I mean, who gauges that? But probably 2012, 2013. Um, I thought the best time to sell real estate was in like 13, 14, 15. It seemed pretty at, like equal, you know, but it's been it's been a heavy se seller's market for a while. Not as bad as it used to be uh, during we had three years in COVID. Uh, there was a statistic uh, with the NAR that just came out that if you bought a home in Ohio, just on average in the state of Ohio, the first quarter of 2020, so let's like rewind right before COVID hit. If you bought a house right before COVID hit, it would be worth 46.8% more today. That's pretty good because mm -hmm. that's like a little, that's like three years. So yeah. uh, we had about three years in a row that we were way over double digit growth, uh, but things are slowing down now. So, you know, now we're at 6%. Uh, but there was two or three years in a row that we were in the 15, 16% range. Uh, but it is still a seller's market. Inventory is really low because we're going to talk about a reason why soon. Uh, but inventory is down. And um, um, but I'm not going to I can't say some of this stuff on this slide because it's going to segue into the other ones. So but yep, still a seller's market, still a seller's market. So uh, all right, off to the next one. Okay, fact or fiction? The number of homes for sale in Ohio is down. Mm, down, meaning the number, yeah. Did we sell more homes in 2013 than we did in 2012? So are, are home sales down in 2013 compared, or 2023 compared to uh, 2022? Back, thumbs ups. If I knew this, I would have bought a, a house when I was in high school then. I know, right, right. A lot of thumbs up. Everyone's really, we got some smart people on this on this call today. We got a couple thumbs down. All right, all in. All right, what's the answer? Fact. That's right. We were down. Uh, we're actually, uh, central Ohio specifically was down 15%, um, and that in compared to last year. So you take the amount of homes. So in Ohio, you take the amount of homes that sold compared to they did this year. And it's, it's down about 15% uh, central Ohio and 13% throughout the state. Um, now I wonder why that happened. Wonder what kept people from listing their house, houses. There's really one significant issue, and we'll, we'll talk about it here in a second, but it is. There's been less houses. So, you know, you might hear a lot of uh, talk on TikTok, and uh, yep, Nancy, you're right. You're, I'm not going to say it yet because we're going to segue into it, but, um, but there was a lot of stuff on social media about the housing market collapsing. Guys, we're in the Fertile Crescent of the Midwest, which is Ohio, the, the market's really, really strong here because of other things. And, uh, you know, home sales are down, not because people don't want to 
buy homes in the state of Ohio. It's because some other things, and that's going to change uh, next year. And we'll talk about that here in a second. So, all right, what's up next, Maddie? I'm on a roll. I feel good. I'm all warmed up. You're doing great. Go. Give me another one. Fact or fiction: Homes are sitting on the market in Ohio. Oh, sitting on market. So that means that they're they're a little staler, meaning they're just sitting around, not being. Um, so the time you stick the sign in the yard, um, are they, you know, are they taking longer to sell or, or not? And some of this depends on the type of year too. So sometimes you ask that question and they're flying off the shelves. Other times, like this time of year, traditional, it's a little slower. So we kind of got a uh, split. We got a split yeah. room here on this one. So this is for the state of Ohio. Yeah, this is probably the most split of the factor fiction so far. Let's see how we end up. All right, get your last last minute seconds here. All right, let's answer it. It's fiction. Yep. Uh, in Ohio. Now you could say, well, wait a minute. My city's was actually a little longer this year. Well, in Ohio, the median days on markets was down by eight days. So it was actually 27 days. So if you took every house in the state of Ohio in 2023, every single one of them, from a mansion to a handyman special, right? Is that, or is that what we call them in real estate world? Are gently used or, you know, you are you handy? This is the one for you. If you take all of those and you average them out together, they actually were on market for eight uh, less days. So depending on the price point, that can differentiate. But overall, things are still going pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, Dave had a question. Do you know the number in Columbus? It held around 27 days, Dave. And well, that that's central Ohio. So that that encompasses like seven, eight counties, not just the city of Columbus. Yeah. Great questions. And if anyone has any questions on a specific slide, I didn't mention this earlier. Go ahead and ask them. We'll, we'll you know, we'll address it in real time. Uh, we will have a whole Q&A at the end. Uh, if you come up with something and you do want to ask questions, uh, we can, we'll definitely ask, uh, you can ask them there. So, all right. Any other questions? If not, what about Cincinnati? Oh uh, boy, pretty close. I think Cincinnati was a tad bit longer, Leah. Yeah. Now, and a lot of people, before we move slides, a lot of people will say, where do you get this data? How do you know this? Uh, depending on what area you live in, if you're in Cincinnati or Dave in Columbus, if you're a member or not, you don't have to even be a member. If you want housing statistics in your area, um, you can go to your local Board of Realtors websites uh, and you can get that. It's called the uh, Monthly Housing Statistics. I do a podcast on it every month. Um, you know, and you can pull all those numbers for you because if you're a real estate agent, I can't stress enough how important it is that you know some of these basic numbers for your clients. So, yeah, good questions, guys. Good questions. Yes. Uh, all yeah. right, let's move on. Okay, fact or fiction, mortgage rates are up. Boy, I don't know if anyone's going to get this one wrong. If not, we're going to call you out. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, so thumbs up if you think rates are up. Thumbs down if you think they went down through, uh, over the last year. We got some laughs because they knew. <laughs> it, it, it was, yeah, a lot of thumbs up. Uh-oh, we're blowing up the internet on this one. We're blowing Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Not one thumbs down. That's good. It'd been pretty tough if you got this one wrong because it's that's been a hot topic of discussion. Yeah, coming. That's right, Fred. Coming down slightly in the last month. It does. Yeah, and I'll address that here in a second. All right, I think we're done. Fact. Rates did go up and they went up pretty significant. They're about up about two points higher um, over the last year. Um, and uh, so 
I think it was Fred that point this out. Rates did come down a little bit. Um, now, the thing about interest rates, they can differentiate significantly within a day or two. That's one thing, you know, and we've seen that about two weeks ago, it got up to almost 8%. Okay, that's no buy downs or anything fancy. And then now it's getting down to a little under seven. Uh, the NER speculated, again, this is all speculation, but I everything that I've researched too, that rates are going to go down uh, between four to six times this year with the Fed which is going to also in turn cause interest rates to mortgage rates to fall on average in the mid sixes for 2024. Um, so that is a huge significant difference between an 8% rate and a six and a half. And I really think, and, and I, you know, it's pure speculation, but we've had a lot of people, hence why sales were down was you got people in the, the I think it's 82% of people in the United States have less than a 5% interest rate on their loan. Which means if you have a 4% rate, for example, on your house now, would you want, really want to move? If you didn't have to, would you really want to move to another home and have a 7.5 rate or an 8 that we had uh, over the last month? And the answer is no. If you really ask around, uh, you know, a lot of people say like, no, nah, we're not moving. We have a, I mean, we refinanced during COVID and have a 3.25 rate. Uh, if we moved, even if we bought the exact same house, going from a 3% rate to a 7% rate on a three or $400,000 home, I mean, that could be the difference of twelve to $1,500 a month just on interest payments, um, it could be significant, you know, if you're getting into that half a million dollar price range. So that's why a lot of people stayed put uh, for now. Now, as we progress, uh, you know, down the sixes, and I'm gonna, I have a quiz for you guys too. Uh, as we get down to the sixes, um, then I think a lot of people are gonna start being conditioned that, you know what, it is what it is, okay? So I have a question for everyone at home. What is the average interest rate, not exact, you can just, you know, round up or down, that we've seen in the last 52 years? So if you took rates over the last 52 years, what would be the average rate over the last 52 years? Okay, we got 3%, 8, we got a 3, 8, 4.5. Seven, twelve, seven, twelve and a half, five, six, five, seven, twelve, six, six, five, thirteen, six, six. Oh, someone's gave me a six point three four. That's that's real <laughs> accurate. So five. I think people are googling, Maddie. I think they're googling right now. This answer, eight. They could be. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good participation. Actually, it was a little over 7%. Yeah. 717, I think. That's a 52 year average uh, as they started tracking it with uh, 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 Freddie and Fanny. And uh, so we're really, in all honesty, everyone freaked out because rates went from about five to seven and 12 months. But all honesty, guys, it's it's average. It's just the way it is, but we're not conditioned yet to it. Um, it just kind of threw us off. So as we, uh, you have clients get conditioned to, Hey, this is just what it is. This isn't high. This is just typical rates. Then, um, you know, they're going to start saying, okay, well, it is what it is. And this is way it's just going to be. So let's go ahead and make that move. Especially if we get, uh, rates down in the sixes, uh, that'll be, uh, you know, let clients know if that happens, because that might be a time for them to pull the trigger. So good job. Good job, everyone. Uh, um, there were a couple questions. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Before you did your little pop quiz on everyone. Um, uh, uh, Jack asked if you are advising clients to purchase now before rates drop. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Let me answer that one for you, Jack. Well, I think a couple things. One, it's always about time. Like, um, you know, what's their motivation? 
the thing about with interest rates and mortgage rates, you're there's a saying that lenders love to use, right? They always say, listen, you're married to your house, not your mortgage. Because people refinance uh, very, you know, they, they refinance all the time, okay? Very few people ever will have a loan and, and keep that same loan for 30 years, you know? So um, I think the thing about it is this. Remember that statistic we talked about, about the home price increase? So let's put it in perspective. Say you had a client last year, rates were like five and a half percent. That's about what it was, we'll say, a year ago. And uh, around five and a half percent, early in the year, uh, five and a half percent. And the house was $100,000. Now, if we remember, on average, home prices went up 6.8%. Okay. So say you had someone that was looking at a condo to buy. It was a $100,000 condo, and they didn't pull the trigger because they thought rates were getting a little too high, or they'll wait for the housing crash bubble, whatever they're, you know, how that doom and gloom we get a lot. Well, now, if they bought that same condo, that $100,000 condo is now going to be one hundred seven, dollars right? Because it appreciated. We didn't have a crash or whatever. And that 5.5% rate is now 7 so congratulations, you know, so my example is always, listen, you, you know, if you find a home that you you can afford clearly, um, then you want to, you know, and it's, you know, that's a 30-year commitment, maybe less or more, but go ahead and make the move. You can always refinance. A lot of lenders lately have been doing free refis. So meaning if you bought a house and the rates did go down, uh, you could get uh, do a free refinance with them to take advantage of that lower rate. Um, so I hope that answered your question. So I guess the answer, long winded answer is, listen, if you find a house you like, you better buy it because it's probably going to cost you more next year with through appreciation. So was there another one, Maddie, another question? Um, I had a question about mortgage rates, when they're going to go down. Uh, Leo Woods asked, how soon do you think interest rates will drop? Well, uh, actually, they have already started. They've already started. So um, now the thing about it is uh, we have someone that comes to, we have biweekly meetings and gives us updates on interest rates because it's important that our agents know what rates are. Because think about it, if you're at a barbecue or something, and someone's like, oh, yeah, rates I heard were 10%. And you're like, what? No, no, no. They're like, they, they're they like, they're just dipping under seven. And they're like, really? I thought I, I read on this, whatever. There's so much misinformation out there, clickbait stuff. Um, you could say, no, no, they're like, they're dipping under seven, depending on the day or what have you. Um, it makes you sound really smart. So make sure you keep up on that. But rates have uh, dropped. Uh, it was about 8% about two weeks ago, and now they're about 7 Now, you do see people on Facebook and lenders saying, I can get you locked in at 6 and a half or 6 and a quarter. Um, and we're not going to go into it today, but usually when you start seeing rates that low, it's because they're making your clients, if you remember from Hondros, is that they're making them pay a fee to get that rate a little lower. It's called points. We're not going to talk about it today, but uh, but that is there's a fee associated with that. What we're talking about today is just uh, just rates straight across the board without any additional fees or buy downs. So, but they're dropping now. Uh, get ready because uh, you know it's going to probably they're anticipating it to getting under six and a half without points or buy downs. So that's pretty good. That's under average. So take advantage of it. All right. Any other questions about this topic? Rates have been a hot topic in 2023, and it'll be the same in 2024. Great questions. Any, was there anything else, Maddie, on this one? Um, nope. Is that considered scare tactic to buy and pay more later? Um, that's a good question. Well, not necessarily. It's just, you know, it's just numbers. Sung had that question. Sung had a question. Is it considered a scare tactic to declines to buy now or pay later? Well, it's just about what they're comfortable with. Um, you know, real estate agents, you really shouldn't be emotional. 
I tell clients, I'm not emotional about this house. Like, this is your home. You get emotional about it. If you buy it, great. If you don't, that's fine too. I don't live here. I don't get to enjoy the backyard and the, the pond view and the green grass. Like, that's you and you pay the mortgage. Um, so, but I can tell you, you know, if you waited last year to buy a house and now we're looking at it this year, that house cost you about 7% more by waiting. That's just hard numbers. Um, you know, if it's, if they're not, I guess if they're still nervous to buy for whatever reason, then you got to let them process that out, you know, but if it's more of a non-emotional, um, can, you know, consideration, because again, they can buy it now. And then if the rates do get down to low sixes, they can refinance and maybe they can get with the lender to refinance for free. You know, if they buy it at seven and then refinance at six, but they bought it when the house was a little less than it was because home prices are not projected to go down this year. They're not, they're going up. Now, how much we don't know. I mean, they're, they're going to, they, everyone's saying the NAR and the realtor.com has speculated. It's again, speculation, unless we have something weird, AKA COVID part two is that, <laughs> is that everything's going to just start leveling off. Leveling off means kind of what we had last year, five, 6%. That's, you know, just everything's kind of calming down. So a home, statistically, will cost your clients more next year at this time than it did today. So give them the information, let them make the best decision. That's our job. So, all right. Good, good questions, guys. Uh, all right, what's next? That was a tough one. I, I should have <laughs> drank more coffee. I got beat up on that one. <laughs> Okay, fact or fiction, Ohio's population is growing. Ah, so is Ohio growing or dying? This one's, this is, we had a thumbs down on that one, yeah. really. I'm going to have to give them a tour in some of these places where they're building all these condos and apartment buildings. I wonder where we're going to, where all these people are coming from. Yeah. 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 Someone someone put a baby emoji. Yeah, people are. <laughs> yeah, thumbs up, thumbs up. We had one thumbs down, but we had a lot of thumbs up. So, all right, what's the answer, Maddie? What do you think? Yeah. Well, Nancy said it right there, Intel. Yeah, that, right. So it's I fact. Mean... Yeah, we're still increasing. Now, to be fair, there were some major cities um over the last 20 years that were decreasing but the state of ohio as a whole uh is increasing uh and it increased 1.9 percent and there's reasons why well we're gonna that'll be another slide we're gonna talk about shortly but uh yeah yeah i mean uh people are still moving into the state of ohio some areas more than others obviously and you know i i think uh, uh central ohio is the fastest growing um, part of the, the, the state as in quantity of numbers, but not necessarily percentages. And we're going to talk about that too in a sec. So, um, but good job guys. Yep. We're still growing. All right. That was an easy one. All right. Next one, Maddie. Okay. Um, fact or fiction millennials are driving the Ohio real estate market. Hmm. That's a good one. So are millennials, are they the ones buying the most houses or the least amount of houses? So millennials were born, so they're like late 20s to about 40. I can't remember the exact number, but it's something something along that line. So yeah, we got some thumbs. Uh, we're kind of split on this one. Yeah, it's definitely a mix. Um, yeah, let's see. Got some thumbs downs. Thumbs up. People are a little bit more cautious on this one because they're not sure. So this wasn't like the uh, the interest rate one where everyone's like, oh, yeah, we know about this one. So, all right. Okay, I think what's died off. Don't they live at home with their parents? Yeah, a lot of them do. You're right. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's millennials. That's probably more Gen X wires, I think. Gen but, Z. Uh, I think I'm right on the, the cutoff for millennials. Okay. And I'm, I don't live at home with my parents. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, I'm just old. I don't know what that one is. So, <laughs> all right. What's this one, Maddie? What's the answer? Okay. Fact. Fact. That's it is. It's fact. Yep. Uh, they actually made up about 50, about half uh, mortgage requests in Columbus. Now, mortgage request. This could be a little deceiving, though. But mortgage requests means they're actually doing the applications. Okay. People at that age usually don't have cash to go buy a house outright. Okay. Um, so if you want to talk about mortgage applications, that's mortgage requests, mortgage applications, your millennials are driving the market for sure. Now you do have, um, you know, some people will ask, like what percentages of people like pay cash in Ohio for a house? It's actually higher now, like during COVID and thing it spiked, uh, it, but it kind of depends. It's like anywhere from like 16 to like 20% historically in Ohio market. If you, I have a friend in Florida and he's in the mortgage business. If you ask them that same question in Sarasota, Boca Raton, and it's the opposite. About 80 to 90% of people pay cash for properties. Uh, down there, but the demographics older, which means they, you know, they have more money, um, you know, or they've liquidated a home here and uh, oh, uh, like up here in the Snowbirds, and they're using that equity that they sold their home and then buying condos in the South. Uh, so Sung says, "Wow, Oop, it popped off." So she had a, maybe it was just a, yeah, downsizing. Uh, I was guessing, okay, yeah, she was thinking, wow, I thought 5% pay cash. Yeah, it's a little bit more. It's a little bit more than that. Anywhere, from, I think it's around 16 to 20%. We did see a peak, like a real high peak right at COVID, but there was a lot of money floating around during that time. Now, when I say it, it might went up 2 or 3%, uh, but traditionally, you know, majority of the time when you're, as an agent, majority of the time you're going to have a loan on that property. Uh, now, we do have the most amount of uh, investment properties purchased, um, meaning they're people who are purchasing residential homes specifically or investors than ever before. And they're using cash. Uh, so you you are that you're seeing that bump in that number. So but uh, uh, yeah, wholesalers, Fred, now wholesalers do sell their contracts. It could be a, a loan. Um, but, or it could be cash. So yep, a lot of wholesalers out there for sure. So, all right. Any other questions on that? Nope. Okay, next one. A uh, fact or fiction. Ohio suffers from a lack of business development. Oh, geez. Okay. So we're growing. We know that. We know that we're a growing state. So if we're growing, where does everyone work, right? That's that's usually what drives people to this a particular area. So let's see if anyone thinks that we're suffering from lack of business development. Obviously, there's some parts of Ohio that may be lacking in that, but just overall. A lot of thumbs down. I don't, oh, we got one. Oh, no, two, two thumbs ups. Got a lot of thumbs downs. Let's see. Low wages compared to rise in home values. Yeah, well, the yes. Right. Yeah, the difference between wages and inflation didn't match for sure. Yeah. But that's kind of everywhere. But you know, and not, you know, in Ohio especially. I mean, we were selling homes in small uh rural communities that I would never would have guessed when prices were that high. So all right. So what's the answer, Maddie? Fiction. Fiction. Yep. Yeah, especially, I mean, a lot, a lot of parts of uh, central Ohio, uh, um, Ohio in general, but central Ohio, I mean, you have Honda, uh, LG, in, Intel. Everyone's like, Intel, the chips, what's that all about? Google. Yep. They've created a lot of, a lot of jobs. Uh, and, you know, just just with Intel alone, they've done groundbreaking. Um, and I was talking to a, a contractor who's in Amazon. Fred's in Amazon. Yep. Um, that is in plumbing down in 
Athens. Yeah, Athens, Ohio. So down south, beautiful part of the country or country in, in the state. And he said he was in the plumbing business contracting. And he said that Intel is going to need about 16,000 plumbers. That wow. I'm not talking about carpenters and electricians. 16,000 plumbers they're going to need that are coming all over the United States. And everyone who's a plumber in the state of Ohio is basically taking those contract jobs. Wow. And I, I mean, that is the, that is just to build Intel. That isn't including all these like little suppliers that supply to Intel. So, and then you got them. So I don't know if anyone wants a career change, you might want to think about becoming a plumber. Maybe Andres will come up with a plumbing division. We'll teach <laughs> you. I might get a job there because it is, it's going to be expansive. And in all honesty, no one really even knows what that's going to look like, but that's going to change the entire Eastern part of Ohio. Not just central Ohio, but I mean, Cleveland, you can take 77 right down and jump over on, you know, it's not that far. And it's going to, it's going to drastically change that landscape over the next 10 years. So, but uh, yeah, good job, guys. All right. Um, we're, we're winding down. We don't have many more, do we? I don't think so. Yep. Um... All right. What's, what's up next? Fact or fiction, there's only opportunity in the major cities in Ohio. I think this is the last one, I think. So, all right. So, fact or fiction, there's only in real estate. Let's talk. We're only talking about real estate here. So, you know, you have to live in a big city to make any money in real estate. That's where all the money is. And no one's buying real estate in small communities. A lot of thumbs down. I don't, everyone's thumbs down. This is probably my favorite slide. <laughs> A lot of thumbs down. All right. Okay. What do you think, Maddie? What do you think? What do you think? Is this fact or fiction? I think it's false. Fiction. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's see. I'm a YouTube plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what we need to do. We're going to have to create a new business model. Plumbers, YouTube plumbers. It's fiction. Um, we talked about this at the beginning, about different, some cities that you wouldn't think that have, you know, had kind of the uh, Rust Belt mentality over the last 30 years, maybe 40. Um, but these are the fastest growing cities in our state over the last 10 years. Okay. South Lebanon. That's north of Cincinnati. I don't anyone on here from Lebanon or give me a thumbs up. They're leading the charge. Nobody. Okay, that's north of Cincinnati, right off 75. You're kind of you're kind of stuck between Tracy. She gave me a thumbs up. She's down from that near Westchester. All right. So Lebanon, that's uh home of the Golden Lamb. It's a really cute town, but it is. It's they've done a really nice job in their downtown. But They've grown 61% over the last 10 years. I don't know. Some people think that's a lot or not, but that's that's significant. I mean, Sunbury, that's not too far from where I live. That's north, just right off 71, heading north, north out of uh, Columbus. That's grown 56%, and it feels like it. I mean, they are building houses, apartments everywhere up there. It's a little bit more affordable, you know, compared to Powell or maybe Westerville, but it has exploded. You got Harrison, Pickerington, Monroe, Hilliard, Powell. Uh, that's where I live. Um, Obetz, uh, Avon up in Cleveland, and Pataskala. So um, Pataskala, that's going to be that's going to be much higher because of what we talked about earlier. What's moving in in that Johnstown, Patasco area? Anybody on the chat? Intel. Good job, Fred. Yeah, Intel. So that that area is going to, it's it has to change because it's going to be right. That's going to be in its back door. So they're, they're going to need more hotels, apartments, you know, short-term living because uh, you're going to have people in and out of there all the time. Even people, even after it's built, you're going to have people, it's going to come there on contracts and leaving and you know, some people are going to stay, some people aren't. So 
Uh, but yeah, if you're in real estate, I get this all the time. Well, you know, I'm not in the big city. That's not where the, the big money is. There's no question certain areas in larger cities, home prices are a little higher than others. Um, but there, you know, this just shows, you know, Columbus, Ohio is not on this. Some of the suburbs are, um, but uh, but you can be in small communities um, and uh, have seen growth. We are very fortunate, everybody, that we live in Ohio. We have licenses in Ohio or soon to be, if you're looking at getting a real estate license, uh, that, you know, I call it the Fertile Crescent. You're very lucky this isn't going to slow down. This isn't going to stop in the next five years. Uh, th there's no reason why the next 20 or 30 years we're not having the same type of conversation. Um, so, But uh, we do have another seminar tomorrow. If you're an agent, great. You don't have to come to that one. But if you're not and you're really thinking about it, because I know there's been a lot of people got bummed out this year that maybe it's not a good time to get into real estate. It's tomorrow from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, in this type of arena. Maddie and I will be on there. And uh, we're going to talk about frequently asked questions about how to be a real estate agent. But don't let all the clickbait and things bum you out. Even if you're an agent, you're kind of thinking about maybe tossing your license or parking it for the year. Don't do it. 2024, number wise, we're going to have more sales for sure. Um, there's no guarantee in life, but that's everything's moving that direction. So keep your license active. Uh, and if you're thinking about getting your license, join us tomorrow from six to seven. It's going to be uh, emailed to you. Um, and it should be a great Q and a, if you're wanting to get in the business and you have a lot of questions, I'll be happy to answer those too. So anything else, anyone else in the chat have any questions before we slide into the Q and a? All right, let's move to the Q&A. All right. Take it over, Maddie. All right. Well, we'll leave this up here. If anybody has any questions about classes um, or any more questions for Adam about the real estate market in general, um, please ask away. Great job, by the way, Adam. Oh, thank you. Yeah, You're very knowledgeable. Oh yeah. Um, well, you have to. I think it's really important uh, that uh, all the agents on here that are existing agents and soon to be make sure you keep up on your numbers. Know what's going on in your market. That's your job, and uh, just make sure you do that because your clients they deserve that from you. Looks um, like a thread popped up here. Good lead generators. We could take, we could talk on that all night. Um, let me, um, I'll put my Facebook, I, I'm on Facebook. I'll, I'll put that, uh, my Facebook uh, handle on the chat here in a second. If you have any like realtor type questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer those offline for you guys. And I can throw my email on there too, but I do check my Facebook all the time. Um uh, oh, we got a lot of questions coming yep. in here, which is great. Um, you're, uh, what are good? Okay. Brett, I'll put my Facebook in so you can ask me that question offline. Um, how often do you check housing stats? Nikki, that's a great question. Every month, every month, uh, real estate stats come out. I check them every single month. Um, I'm not sure what part of the Ohio you live in, every board of realtors, you don't even have to be a member. You can go on their websites. How Dayton's great because it's right on their front page. Every month, they break it down easiest. I think Dayton's is probably the nicest one. It's clean that you can get that information. You can compare it year over year and what's going on. Uh, so check it every month, guys. Things change quick. Uh, what resources, Charles says, what resources would you recommend for new agents to learn to get leads? Okay, leads is a big one. Uh, I'm going to put my Facebook in there, Charles. You can ask me that same question because that we could spend three hours on. Maddie, you, do you have that much time? To, I'm just... <laughs> I do not. I know. We'll, we'll, Unfortunately. We'll, we'll, I know. We'll cover that, uh, guys. 
how much does the state section of the test verify um vary okay so william asks about this will be a good one for tomorrow william mm -hmm. but just uh and that's from six to seven tomorrow we're going to talk about this kind of stuff but there is two sections of the exam the state and national they do differ because one is more of a general about how the general national questions and then the state is state specific um, a lot of law and legal in the state section of the exam and uh, try to jump on tomorrow because I'll, I'll answer that one for you uh could you address the growth in apartments nancy asks can you address the growth in apartments we there was a section about um apartments and construction and i didn't sit on that specifically nancy that was part of the nar forecast um apartments the investment on the apartment side has slowed down as in new plans for construction. Now they were saying it doesn't feel that way because there's a lot of stuff that's still like getting finished up projects. Cause when you do apartment complex, it takes a couple of years. You gotta pass city ordinances and zoning. People fight it all the time. Um, but, uh, but there's been a large growth in apartments, but I know that part of it is slowing down because interest rates. It's been expensive for developers to borrow money at those higher rates because at one time they were borrowing it next to nothing, the cost. And now with rates gone up, it's slowing down construction on apartments. Um, your pod, your podcast is on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, it's there's tons of shorts and stuff on there, Scott. Uh, you can see that. Uh, April Congrats, asked, April. Oh, I just passed my exam last month. Good job, April. Thank you, Hondros. What are the go-tos or must-haves where I can educate myself about real estate? Well, I think first and foremost, this would be a great one for tomorrow as well, but your broker really needs to be guiding you and educating you. I mean, the thing about it, guys, is this isn't something you do like once a year. This is something you got to do every month and stay on top of it. Just be careful where you get your information. Um, there's a lot of misinformation that's out on out there, but I always say numbers don't lie. So if you you read the housing statistics and stuff, you can easily understand what's going on and make sure you use that to educate your clients and yourself specifically. Uh, Song asks, what do you think chat. about using oh chat chat GPT uh, PDP looks like. to communicate with clients? Um, well. I don't, I, I, that is something I need to get more educated on is AI on the chat automation. Um, there are certain things with automation with your messenger and things I think is good, but you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sold there yet. Do yeah. you definitely use chat D, uh, GDP for like, um, when you want to come up with something like, um, uh, um, uh, like home descriptions for the MLS yeah. or something like that. I'm a better talker than a typer. So that, that helps me. I know that, um, chat ahead, GPT, like, um, some of their, their information, some of its information is outdated actually, um, from what I know. Okay. So yeah. it's good. It's really good. I use a lot of the, the visuals like for mm -hmm. social media posts and things like that. So, um, but you, know, you still got to put the legwork in. It's not perfect yet. It's pretty good. Um, but, uh, but you know, people, when it comes to real estate, it's all about relationships. It really is. It's all about relationships. And if, the, you know, if they think it's automated or it's not personal, then there's some, there will be another agent that'll take a few minutes of their time to make it that way. Uh, yes, Melanie. I'll, yes, I also will put my email in the chat as well uh um and i'll i'll do that here in a second um i'll put my facebook and hondros email in the, in the chat yep i think we are going to try to do more um webinars like this sung um and we'll be sure to email you out the information when we we put those together yep here i'm going to put my facebook in right now guys and i'd be happy
Okay, there's my Facebook, and then there you go. So you can shoot me an email. Uh, I am on Facebook. You can uh, DM me on Facebook. I check it all the time. And uh, I appreciate you guys coming out and learning a little bit more about Ohio real estate today. Okay. Right. Take it over, slide. Maddie. Talk to them about and, and also, guys, we have a lot of great deals coming up, too. If yeah. you're thinking about getting into real estate, uh, Maddie's going to talk a little bit more about some promo codes. So take it away, Maddie. Thanks, Adam. You're welcome. Okay. Next slide. My clicker's not working. There it goes. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining today. Um, I know it's a snowy Monday, and but to show our appreciation, we do have uh, three discount codes to offer you. Um, so if you or anybody you know, friends and family um, that are interested in taking classes with us at Hondros, um, we do have a $275 off code for our pre-licensing packages. Um, we have $50 off on continuing education classes um, for online continuing ed. And we also have 30% off our post-ed classes. Uh, please feel free to um, take a picture of this. You can also contact us by phone or email. Um, you can scan that QR code, but we would love to see you and some of our classes. I know Adam would love to see some new faces, um, but yeah. Please share this information and um, we would love to see anybody that's interested in becoming an agent tomorrow. Um, like Adam mentioned, it's from six to seven. Uh, we'll be sure to email the link to that Zoom meeting out. Um, but again, thank you for joining us today. I hope you guys have a great holiday. Yep. Happy holidays, everybody, and uh, hopefully we'll see some of you guys tomorrow. Yep. Yep. You too, guys. Thank you.